Hello everyone, I'm CJ Werleman. In a recent episode, we revealed how Islam is growing in unexpected places, including South Korea, Japan and elsewhere. But flying almost completely under the radar is the rapid growth of the Islamic religion in Latin America, which has become home to nearly 2 million Muslims and growing. This is a story that hasn't been told anywhere. Now let's get into it. 2 million Muslims in Latin America tells only a tiny part of this remarkable but untold story. Because when you drill down into the data, you find the Muslim population in all of the Americas growing at a rate nearly five times greater than the non-Muslim population. And at some point within the current decade, the Muslim population is expected to double what it was just two decades ago. But nobody in the Western media is telling this story because there's nothing the West hates more than positive narratives about Muslims and Islam, which is exactly why we started this show two years ago to counter this imbalance. But this headline right here tells you everything you need to know about how the rapid rise of Islam in South America has gone totally unnoticed. Even though Chile offers a fascinating case study into how the religion has taken hold on the continent. You see, Islam has grown in Chile partly because of Arab migrations during the 19th and 20th centuries. But when you fast forward 100 years to today, we see the religion taking root among the local population, with the country now boasting more than a dozen mosques. Watch as hundreds of Chilean worshippers celebrate the Islamic festival of Eid last year. The growing Muslim population and the acceptance of Islam among indigenous Chilean people is why the government has welcomed Palestinian refugees who have fled the brutal and criminal Israeli regime. I came to Chile five years ago because at home there is too much war, too much oppression from Israel. Here we are free. Everything is pretty. The doors are open for us to come and to really live. Today, Palestinians in Chile represent the largest Palestinian community outside the Middle East and have become highly influential within the country's economic and political spheres. I have Chilean friends and Arab friends too. Now we celebrate Chilean and Arab customs. Here your religion isn't an issue at all. I am treated well wherever I go. But whereas the Muslim population remains relatively small in Chile, it has soared in neighboring Argentina, climbing from 1 million in 2010 to an expected 1.2 million within the next few years. In fact, more than 4 million Argentinian citizens, or 10% of the total population, are ethnically Arab, having descended from those who migrated from both the British and Ottoman empires during the 19th century. But while most of them were Christian Arab migrants, Muslim Argentinians today have made Islam the fastest growing religion in the country, while also making it home to the largest mosque in South America, which has become a focal point for Islamic Dewa on the continent helping introduce Islam to millions of non-Muslims in Latin America. Encouragingly, the Argentinian government has also passed laws to protect Muslims from discrimination, including legislation to allow women to wear the hijab, a law that was passed at the same time France and other European countries were banning Islamic clothing in public spaces. The administration of Cristina Fernandez has passed an historic legislation that allows Muslim women to wear hijab in public places without the fear of persecution. They can use photographs wearing headscarves for their national ID cards. This support for Muslims has also carried over to the Argentinian national football team, which boycotted its match against Israel four years ago in solidarity with the Palestinian people. But before we go on, we kindly ask you please support our effort to counter injustices in the Muslim world by supporting my journalism and this show at patreon.com slash CJ You'll be helping me bring these kind of stories to a broader audience. Thank you. Now back to our show. After Argentina, Venezuela has the second largest Islamic population in South America with more than 125,000 Muslims which accounts for just under 1% of the total population, with a majority being of Palestinian, Syrian and Libyan descent. But like Argentina, Venezuela's Muslim population is also growing by 20% every two decades, a testimony to the way in which the indigenous community has welcomed the religious minority with open arms.
Venezuela is also home to the second largest mosque in Latin America, the Mosque of Sheikh Ibrahim, located in the country's capital. But if you're looking for the oldest mosque in Latin America, then you'd have to travel to the city of Sao Paulo in Brazil, where 4,000 Brazilian Muslims gather for prayers every Ramadan. There are Muslims from many different countries here, from Lebanon, from Syria, from Morocco, and from other nations. So it's beautiful to see all the people celebrating the end of Ramadan and praying together in the mosque. Nobody knows the exact number of Muslims in Brazil but many are sure it now constitutes one of the fastest growing religions in the country, given it's taking hold in areas that have zero Middle Eastern immigrants. Many now see Islam as a solution to the plethora of social and economic issues that have bedeviled Brazilian society for decades. They're Brazilians and they're black. Islam doesn't run in their families, all converted months or years ago. By taking up Islam, they believe they've found solutions to the problems plaguing their slums and suburbs, starting with drugs. The story of Latin Americans finding salvation in Islam from the crushing heel of poverty and misery is being retold everywhere in South America, from Peru to Cuba to Guatemala. You see, where Christianity, specifically the Catholic Church, has delivered only corruption, exploitation and oppression to the South American continent, Islam, through its appeals to justice, equality and hope, is measurably improving the lives of former Christian families. This is undeniable. Because in Islam, South Americans are finding identity, structure and guidance. As observed by Stephanie Londona, who published a study into religious conversions in Latin America. I know exactly where they stand. So the Quran happens to become this book that is almost like a guidebook that tells you exactly how to wear, what to wear, when to wash, what to eat, how to behave, when to pray. It's important we inform the world about the organic growth of Islam in Latin America and other parts of the world too, because many of these stories illustrate how indigenous populations have warmly embraced Muslims and not followed the Western world's footsteps in treating Islam as a foreign or civilizational threat. Muslims have enriched Latin America with their religion, culture and cuisine, which is something that should be reported and celebrated in the Western media. Anyway, that's my time for today. Please don't forget to subscribe to this channel and we kindly ask you please support this endeavor by becoming a member of this show at patreon.com slash CJ Wellerman. We can't produce, sustain and grow this show without your help and we offer exclusive benefits to those who do. But for now, good night, good morning, wherever you are and stay blessed. Thank you.